Somebody shout hallelujah!
worship him with this song. I want you to worship him with the whole of your heart and give him all the praise. <laughs> Convention of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We say, Be thou exalted, be thou glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that even as we're about to hear your word, we ask that open up our hearts, Lord Jesus, be able to understand that which you want to say through us in the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, King of kings and Lord of lords. At the end, all glory be unto your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah! If you know and you know that you're going to be enlarged, can I hear you shout a living hallelujah? Before I begin, I want to say a very big thank you to Mommy Gio, our Daddy Gio, to all our pastors. A very big thank you to our youth leaders. God bless you for this rare opportunity. And to each and every one of you listening to me, I pray you will not go home the same way you've come. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please, you can be seated. We've been giving the team a large, and it's been an amazing time in IYC 2023. How many of you are witnesses to that? Can I see you wave your hand to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? All right. And we'll be taking our text from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, which says, But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shoot for the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Tell your neighbor, I am chosen. Can I hear you say it louder if you believe it? I am chosen. I am peculiar. I am a royal priesthood. Amen. So we're talking of enlarge. Now, what does it mean to enlarge? Enlarging means expansion, it means becoming wider, it means becoming better. It all talks about getting bigger in whatever aspect of your life. Now we're talking about divine enlargement. What does divine enlargement mean? It simply means when God intervenes and brings about growth, expansion, and increase. When God intervenes and brings about growth, expansion and increase in a person's life ministry family business your career whatever aspect of your life when god intervenes then you experience divine enlargement tell your neighbor i will experience divine enlargement say it louder if you believe it i will experience divine enlargement amen so why should we enlarge there are so many reasons why you should enlarge. Why must you get bigger as a Christian? Why must you choose to grow? Why, why must you choose to become better as a Christian? And the first thing we'll be looking about is that it's a command. It is a command. You should, be, you should be enlarged as a Christian because it is a command. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Matthew 28, verse 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Now Christ gave this commandment to his, his apostles before he left earth, and told them to go out. Now they cannot, 
As a Christian, you cannot go and teach the gospel if you do not have the gospel, if you do not have the word of God residing in you. Some said, thy word have I hid in my mouth that I will not sin against you. You've been given that commandment to go out to the world and teach the gospel. Tell your neighbor, I will obey. I will obey. The second reason you should enlarge is that you need to take over. Say it. You need to take over. Amen. How can you take over the banking industry? How can you take over the entertainment industry if you are not enlarged? It takes somebody with an open mindset, somebody that has mentally worked on his, him or himself, somebody that has gone through a series of trainings to be able to enlarge. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Genesis 1 verse 28 says, And God blessed them, said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You've been given that assignment to take over. Now, you will not take over if you've not decided within yourself that I must be better as a person. The flaws that you know you have, you cannot enlarge as a person if you've not told yourself that I, I'm supposed to take over, so I must do better as a Christian. The third thing to look at is Christ will not return until the word has been spread. Christ Jesus will not return until the word has gone through the depths of the world. Luke chapter 19 verse 12 Luke chapter 19 verse 12 says, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Verse 13 says, Luke 19 verse 12, now I'm reading verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Now those ten pounds can signify the abilities God has given you, those talents he has given unto you. Are you a singer? Are you a word minister? Are you a drama minister? You know that deep down you have these gifts. But you are doing nothing. You are doing nothing. Lift your hands to God and say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I will not die with what you have given me. I will use it to the expansion of your kingdom. May God hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Now, how can you be enlarged? I said earlier that enlargement thinks about expansion. When you're talking about enlargement, you're talking about growth. Now, a farmer plants a seed. When the seed is about to grow, it has different stages it goes through. From a seedling, it starts growing. Then the stems, you have the roots going deeper. The same way in the Christendom, you have the evangelists, those that plant the seeds. You have the apostles and the teachers of the word, which are the people that water the seed. And you have those that go into the world and expand the kingdom of God through the spiritual gifts that they have. We're talking about how we can enlarge. The first thing to note is that you should desire expansion. Say after me, desire expansion. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8a, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Now every change begins with a burning desire. For you to grow, you must have a burning desire. If you have a weak desire, it is not going to pay for the sacrifices you need to make. Believe me or not, it's just like a tenant that has been fed up of paying house rents for so many years and says, oh no, I want to become a landlord. Yes, the desire is there. But the first month passes, nothing. The second month, no action. The third month, no action. Beloved, in the next two years, if there is still no action, he or she remains a tenant. I pray for every tenant in the house this, this evening. I pray for every tenant in this evening. The Lord will enlarge you to become landlords in Jesus' name. The Lord will enlarge you to become landlords 
in Jesus' name. The second thing to note is to act and pray on that decision. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10 says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. First Chronicles 4, verse 10, And that thine hand might be with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Now, the Lord who has enlarged the coast of Jabez will enlarge your coast in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord has enlarged Jabez will enlarge your coast in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Jabez was a youth with a burning desire for change. He was born in sorrow and he understood that things cannot remain the same if I remain the same way, if I refuse to take a stand and say, no, I am tired. And he cried to God and God answered him god granted that which he requested now jabez was a youth can i ask you what are you asking god for today yes you've told god i need this but is that desire truly in you do you truly desire him may god help us in jesus name the third thing to note is that you must stay close to your spiritual leader in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, it tells us of the sons of the prophets that knew that the tent they were in was too small to accommodate them. It was too small to accommodate them. And so they told the prophets that we need more. We need a bigger space. And they went forth into the forest to cut down the trees. And as one of them was cutting the trees, it says in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings verse 6, chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, verse 5 peculiarly, it says that the man, when he was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water and he cried, Alas, for it was borrowed. What did the man of God do? He simply asked, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. Now, I want you to note two things here. First, they realized that the place that they were in was too small. Secondly, their spiritual leader was close by. So you can imagine what would have happened if the prophet was not close by. They would have been in a very big trouble. They would have been in a very big trouble. I believe that after this meeting, every youth in this place will see the need of the church and will grow towards it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now the Lord has given our Father and the Lord a vision. Vision 2032 to win 40 million souls to the kingdom of God. And can I tell you that this cannot be achieved if you've not decided to enlarge spiritually, if you've not decided to enlarge mentally, and if your capability is not enlarged. You need to enlarge your capacity to be able to go further in life. May God help us to stay close to our spiritual leaders and never... Never neglect the anointing upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So every problem that you are facing, the anointing that you serve is will work for you and swallow such problems in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, partner with others. Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 10 tells us of the account of Simon Peter. He was a fisherman. So after Jesus went into his boat and taught the people, Simon Peter had told all night, he had told all night and he caught nothing. In verse 5, when, Simon, when Jesus told Simon to let down his net, he told Jesus that they had caught nothing, but at the instruction of Jesus, he was going to let down his net. And they had a great, great catch. catch. Verse 7 says, Luke chapter 5, verse 7. Luke chapter 5, verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, that they began to sink. The power of partnering with others. Now in the case of Moses, in Exodus chapter 17, Exodus 17, when Israel was at war with the Amalekites, and Moses was raising his hands up, and at the point he got tired. Because when his hands were up, the Israelites had victory. And the moment his hands were down, they were losing. But because of Aaron and Hor, they began, they were his pillars. Beloved, can I tell you that where your strength alone cannot take you, 
the grace of the people around you can take you. Say, Father. Say, Father. Help me to associate with those that you want for my life. I will not lose my destiny. Help us. May God help us in Jesus' name. The early church grew with ceaseless prayers. They grew in evangelism and signs followed them. They had a faith that produced obedience. They had a passion that produced unity. And they had this desperation that produced prayers. May God help us to be steadfast in him in Jesus' name. Now we've seen different ways we can enlarge. Now what are the benefits of enlarging? Luke chapter 10 verse 25 Luke chapter 10 verse 25 tells us, 27 rather, Luke chapter 10 verse 27 tells us that it helps us to improve our relationship with God. When you are enlarged spiritually, when you know that yes, I must grow in Christ, it will improve. There is no way that you say I must get better with Christ, that you will not grow in Christ. The second thing says that it will transform your life. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You will be transformed in Jesus' name. You will be transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. The third thing to note is that it fortifies you from sin. It will fortify you from sin. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 tells us that God will not give us something that is a temptation that is bigger than us. No temptation will come upon you that you will not be able to show in Jesus' name. Amen. There are so many benefits to enlargement. Spiritually, mentally, there are so many benefits. And there as well hindrances to this enlargement. The first thing to note is your prayerlessness can hinder you. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 23. 1 Samuel 12 verse 23 tells us that your prayer, if you are prayerless, it is a sin to be prayerless as a Christian. Growing up, I was taught that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. If you do not give yourself to prayer as a Christian, you do not have any power over the devil. Oh. That's why you must continue to stay. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says we should pray without ceasing. Say, Father, I receive the grace to pray. The second hindrance to note is that your human nature can hinder you. Psalm, 55 verse, Psalm 51 verse 5 tells us that in sin we have been born. Psalm 51 verse 5, in sin you were born. But, but Romans chapter 6 verse 5 to 6 tells us that despite this nature, that we will rise in Christ's resurrection. Say, Father, I refuse to heal to sin. I pray that our flesh will not control us in Jesus' name. Now what does this imply? This implies that God wants you to fulfill purpose. You are enlarging to fulfill purpose. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Judea and in all of Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Holy Ghost power is there to increase you in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost power will increase your capacity in Jesus' name. Now, in conclusion, God can never enlarge a person that has not given him or herself wholeheartedly to God. God is not enlarging you to be obeys. Rather, he's enlarging you to fulfill capacity. Say, I will fulfill my purpose on earth. I will fulfill my purpose on earth. I will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Can I tell you that vision 2032 is real? Evangelism is real, and you cannot go far if you have not decided to expand yourself. If you have not decided to expand your capacity as a Christian, may God help us in Jesus' name. We as Christians will not fall short of God's purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Even as I come to a close, I encourage you that even as Daddy comes up, 
on this exalted altar, please yield to God and may God help you in Jesus name. Please bow down your heads, bow down your heads and pray. Say, Father, say, Father, help me, help me, Lord, that I will not fail you. Help me to expand the kingdom. Make that your prayer this evening. Make that your prayer this evening. Say, Father, help me, Lord Jesus, that I will do that which you want for me and I will not fail you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are amazing. We thank you because you are an amazing Father. You are the source, oh Lord. You are our rock. You are our fortress. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have brought us together today, Lord Jesus, to hear your word. We ask that you shall give us enlightenment in the mighty name of Jesus. Enlarge our course, Lord Jesus, that we will go forth and preach the gospel to the creator, oh Lord, to everyone that you have created in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that we will not, we will never give the devil room, Lord Jesus, to give us fear, to make us depressed even as Christians. Thank you, King of Kings, Lord of Christ, for you know even our prayers, Lord Jesus. Be that we exalted mighty man in battle, for in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah.